Welcome back guys, it is thrift flip time. In today's video, we are going to do, be doing some spring thrift flips. So let's go ahead and get started. To start us out, we are going to be doing a simple flip with this cute glass cloche that I have found at the thrift store a couple months back. And we're just going to take it apart, remove the stickers, clean it up like we do with all of our items. And then we're going to give it a little bit of a painting. So I'm just going to use some white chalk paint and I'm going to paint that wood stand. I'm going to do the, the um, top and the bottom of it, paint it all up nice. I think I did two coats. And then I'm going to give it a light distressing around all of the edges to bring some of that wood back and give it a little bit of character. And seal it in with some polycrylic. Simple as that when it comes to the actual cloche, but then we do want to add the spring element. So I'm going to go with a bird's nest with some eggs, and to do that, I'm just going to take some Spanish moss. I'm going to take it, um, the stuff that I have, this one is the, the kind from the Dollar Tree, so it kind of like clumps up in um, almost like a string, I guess. And if you find that portion, you can start kind of unraveling. And then you can just roll it up. So I just used some hot glue. I started with a little piece at first um, and then kind of rolled it up like a snail shell, I guess. Shell? A snail shell, I guess. And hot glued it. And then I just kept adding to there until it was the size that I wanted. And then I just kind of rolled it up to where it would kind of make that bowl form. And that was all I did. From there, I'm going to be putting in some of these wooden eggs that I picked up from the ta Target dollar spot last spring. Um, I've just painted them a couple different colors and put some speckles on them, which again, I did this last year. So they're already painted up and ready to go. I'm just going to take, I'm just going to set them in and take a little bit of hot glue and hot glue them down to the cloche. Now, I do want this to be removable so that people can use this for all year round if they want to put different things in there. So I just put the tiniest bit of hot glue. That way they can peel it up without causing any damage to the wooden bottom. And super simple and easy, very cute upgrade, but we are all done with product number one. For number two, I could definitely tell that I was out of practice or am out of practice because I haven't flipped anything in a while or actually done like some sort of crafting or creating and I struggled with this one. So I have this wicker basket here. It's like um one that you can hang on a wall and I just wanted to give it an update. I think it's a really cute shape and nice and big so that you can put big florals in there or whatever you want to do but it would be great for a front door. So I'm just going to start by again removing stickers, cleaning it up and then I'm going to take that same white chalk paint and I'm going to give it a good painting. So I'm just going to use a chippy brush and do kind of a messy paint over it. I'm not going to try to worry about getting into every single crevice or anything like that. I'm just going to give a good, I wouldn't say thick coating, but a good thick almost like dry brush to it to where it coats all over. But I'm not worried about the cracks and the crevices. We're going to let that dry and then I am going to do a light distress over the entire piece. Um... And then from there, I was thinking that I would do a stencil. So I got a bunch of fun stencils for Christmas and I was excited to use them. So I have one that says Hello Spring or one that says Welcome. I went with the Welcome just because I wanted it to be, again, all seasons, not just one. And I'm going to stencil that on. Now I did go ahead and tape this down since it is a rounded surface. And I'm just going to take a stencil brush and um, stencil it in. I decided to use black because I wanted it to pop off. And honestly, I'm not loving it. Um, I went ahead and finished it. I did two coats of the black ink very carefully so that there's a lot of room for this to um, go over. So I did a really thin, very dry brush when I stenciled it. So I just did that two, maybe three times. And then I pulled my stencil off and it worked really, really well. Again, I'm not loving this piece, um, so I was trying to figure out how to make it a little better. I did a little bit of black dry brush around the entire thing and I'm kind of just calling it a day. Um, we're going to leave it here. I'll put it in my booth. If it doesn't go, you'll probably see this basket again because I, again, I'm not in love with it. It's not really doing anything for me, but... We're, we're getting the creative juices flowing. We're just kind of prepping ourselves for these next projects coming up. So I did go ahead and seal that with the Rust-Oleum 2X um, in clear matte. 
and we're just gonna set this aside and move on. To redeem myself for the wicker baskets, I have this small one that I picked up that I think is super adorable. I love the shape of it, I love the size of it, um, I love the character from it. So I picked this up and we're going to just give it a little makeover. I'm going to start by removing the flowers that are on here, all of the hot glue with it, um, obviously tags, and just wipe it down, clean it up. And we're going to be using some Waverly Antiquing Wax that has been watered down, and we're going to stain this basket. So I'm just going to take a brush and brush it all over this thing, and then take a paper towel and dab and wipe off of any of the excess and let it dry. And then we're gonna add in some lavender. I love the lavender picks that you can get from Walmart. They're a good price. And they actually look really good. And I just love the antiquing like tint with the purples of the sagey colors. Personal preference, but I love it. So I'm gonna take a pick of that and kind of um cut it down, do whatever I need to do to get the sizes correct. And I'm just gonna kind of weave the stems into the basket. I don't wanna make this permanent. Um, getting the hot glue out from the previous one wasn't the easiest and I had to be careful not to damage it. So if anyone wants to remove the lavender and do different flowers again for different seasons, I don't want to um, do anything to where it might damage that. So I weaved them in there to where they're not going anywhere. You have to pull them back out, but they're secure enough to stay, but not um, permanent to where it can be removed. I love this little basket and I think it's really adorable so let me know so far which one of these is your favorite also consider liking and subscribing to my channel um, give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying this kind of content and if you are here and have watched several videos and you still haven't subscribed I'm just gonna say please 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 join me I am trying to get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of March and would really love to hit that goal the next project that we are working on is this old clock that I had found at the thrift store and I just love the shape of it and thought it would make a really cute birdhouse. So I'm going to kind of disassemble it and turn it into something else. I'm gonna start just by removing the back and removing all of the inner workings of the clock, including the face. And I'm gonna keep the back panel and the back um, like plastic paneling for the back to fill the hole that will be in the back of this now moving forward since we won't have the all of the clock components in there any longer so I'm going to take it all apart remove everything clean it up and we're going to paint it with some chalk paint in the color sage I'm going to give it two good coats and let it dry and then we're going to do some distressing I'm just going to wet distress this um kind of a heavier distress I just want that like redwood color to come back through and I'm going to do it all over on all of the high points and go ahead and seal it with some polycrylic. Now at this point I was loving it but I just wanted to add one more feature that I thought would really take it to the next level and I'm going to add some little feet. I have some of these wood beads that I have used from a previous project. They're already kind of painted a purplish red color so I'm just going to use those to add little feet to the bottom and paint those as well. Now using Star Bond, which is a super glue and it's really, really awesome. It's an instant adhesive. I am using the medium and I am also using the accelerator. And let me tell you guys, this is a game changer. So in the past I use a lot of like um, hot glue with Gorilla Glue or something because the hot glue would help set instantly but the Gorilla Glue or whatever super glue will help bond it and keep it um, for a permanent fix. That way in the long term it's not coming apart or peeling apart. And no one has time for glue to dry out. I mean, that's how I feel, okay? I need to keep moving and get these projects done. So I wanted to just try something else out and I don't think I'll ever go back. Um, I'm in love with this. I definitely have this linked in my um, affiliate links and I'm telling you, I don't think you'll ever go back. If you are a crafter like me and you just have to keep things flowing and you want that good secure bond that you know that, you know, you're not going to have to worry about this falling apart or melting if it gets too hot or whatever, you know, whatever it is. Like I know at some of my craft fairs, um, not all of my stuff is meant for outside. So I have some stuff that hot glue would work perfect for. Well, when it gets too hot or the sun gets on it, which wouldn't typically happen indoors, 
things start coming apart. And that is not the brand I am trying to put out. So I'm obsessed with the, how this works is you would put glue on one side. So whatever um, you're putting together on one side, you go ahead and put the glue on the other side. You spray the adhesive or sorry, the um, bonder. And then when you put them together, it helps it instantly within 10 seconds, even faster than that. And some of my, in my opinion, in some of these projects, because I couldn't even move things like right as I put them down. So you have to work quick and you have to work precise, but it's amazing. So I love this stuff. Um, this is my first time using it, but I've used it on multiple product or projects in this video, as you will see. And I will never go back to the hot glue, Gorilla Glue combination, unless for some reason I am out and don't have it on me right away. So. That's all I have to say about that. I'm gonna use that to um, adhere these feet to the bottom and then I'm gonna paint them in the same color, which is sage. Give them a very, very light distressing because the colors don't quite match, but I just wanted it to kind of hone in and, and look the same. And then I'm going to seal those with the polycrylic as well. Now it's time for the fun part, which is to decorate the inside of it. And I'm just gonna be using some Spanish moss um, I also used the Starbond to um, glue that black paneling back to the back paneling, if that makes sense. I don't know what I'm saying. Um, to make sure it's on there nice and secure because before it was um, screwed into the clock components. And I didn't want a hole in the back, so I just glued that in. And then I wanted to cover that up because you can see that from the front through the hole. So to do that, I'm just going to add some Spanish moss. I am just going to hot glue that in there to cover the back and then the bottom. And then I'm going to put this little bird in um, and hot glue him down to his new home. I thought about doing some words at the top like home tweet home or something like that. But for now, I'm going to leave it as is. I think it's really adorable and probably probably one of my favorites from this video. I'm gonna say you're probably gonna hear some sweet little noises in the background. My daughter just got home and she's in there living her best life. So I'm gonna let her do her thing and if she gets too rowdy, I'll pause it so that you guys don't have to be overwhelmed by that. But moving on, we're gonna make a piece of wall decor. So I have a couple pieces that I had picked up separately that when I got them in the same room, I just really think they're meant to be for each other. I have this kitchen piece of wall art that I had picked up a while ago, like a while ago, and I am ready to give it its makeover. I'm going to start by removing the hanger from the back because I am going to change its orientation, clean it up, and then I'm going to be painting it with the Waverly Ink Black Chalk Paint. So I'm just going to paint it all over, including the frame, the face, and I'm going to let that dry. From there, I'm going to be attempting to crackle, um, just a slight crackle on this piece because I want it to have a little bit more definition and the, the face of this has already got quite a bit of texture. And I just thought that it would look really good. So I'm going to try the Elmer's glue technique and I'm just going to be painting on some Elmer's glue um, semi-thick and letting it set for like maybe 30 seconds. I don't really know exactly how long you should be doing this for. I meant to look it up, but like I said, I don't have time to wait for this. So we, I painted it on in the different sections that I wanted it to be, and then I used the color Sage to paint over it. Now I do know from what I've seen in the past that you don't wanna go over it multiple times. You just wanna go one strip over um, because if you do, it'll start pulling it up. At one point, I did go over one, I think, one too many, um, and I saw how that was happening. So when they say it, they mean it, so don't do that. But I'm just going to paint this entire thing with the sage, and then we're going to let it dry. I have heard that using your heat gun will help accelerate that crackle. Um, so I did use my heat gun on it for a little bit and then let it sit and moved on and came back to that. So when I came back, I could definitely see where it was like, cracking but it was more just like a linear crack instead of like the little squares and like I don't know squares is the best way I can explain it um I didn't really get any of that I just got some of the like I said like linear crackles but I think it looks really good with kind of the messy paint job I did with the stage so you have like spots of black showing through plus that I think it looks really good and I'm really enjoying the way this is turning out 
So this part two to this is that I have these little wall hangers that I have picked up. I knew I needed to mount these to something, so I thought that this would be the perfect background. So what I'm going to do is clean them up and then try to um, coordinate the painting. So I just did a little bit of dry brushing with the black and then also um, go in and paint them with the sage color and then I lightly distress them down. Now at this point when I see the two together, I am not in love because it's too much of the same and I need to figure out a way to make it look a little bit better. Um, I did go ahead and do some white waxing on both pieces. Um, well, I guess there's technically three pieces. So the hangers and the picture to kind of doll down um, and bring everything together. And um, I did that by taking some clear wax and adding just a little bit of white paint to mix up together to give me a nice bright white wax. To do the white waxing, I just painted it on and then wiped it back off. And I'm really liking the color coordination and all of the different colors that are going on. But again, when I put them together, I'm just not loving how they look together. So I decided to take some of my Rub and Buff in Antique Gold and give the frame, the outer frame, a pop. So I just used some masking tape to tape off the face, rubbed that on, and then I'm going to use that to pop some of the details of the little um, planters as well. Just by doing the lips and like the little detailed area and a light brushing of it onto the face. And I am so happy that I have done that because I love it. I'm so excited about this piece now. Um, and all I have left to do is to put them together. So I'm going to use that star bond. I'm going to take it around the back lip um, of it. Well, I did remove the screws from the back because it wouldn't lay flat, so I lied. I did that and then I um, glued the back to the piece and then I glued the piece to the, the back frame that I made. Um, so I did, like I get, I just traced it with the star bond in the back. I sprayed the accelerated down on the face of the piece and put it down after I had already had my measurements and everything set. So I will say the accelerator that you spray on there, I have not noticed any residue left over or any tackiness or griminess or anything from it. So um, as far as it's gone so far, I've used it on three or four projects. I have not noticed any residue left from spraying. So this piece just needs some floral and we will be all done. I picked up some floral um, and some floral foam from Michaels and I'm just going to use it to add some pop of color and just really state this piece and I am in love. So please let me know what you think about this one in the comments below. I have this small little white bird, ceramic bird that I had picked up from on one of my thrifting journeys and I just wanted to kind of pop out the detail and give it a fresh paint. So I'm just going to be taking two different colors of blue, um, kind of like a tealer blue and a light blue, I think it's called pool blue, and I'm going to do a dry brush over this bird. So I'm going to take um, those two colors and do a dry brush. I did the like teal turquoise color first and did it um, all over just hitting those raised edges of all of the feathers and different things and then I took the lighter blue and I did a heavier um, dry brush on it again hitting just the raised portions but more of them and then after that was dry I went back in with that turquoise color and just very lightly randomly hit places just to give it a little bit more um, detail and definition and then I use some clear wax to seal it in. Very simple flip, but I love this little bird. I think he's super cute, and I'm very excited to have him in my booth. Last but not least, I had picked up these little ceramic florals, um, like floral plaques almost, wall plaques, a while ago, probably a year or so ago. I fell in love with them, but I wasn't quite sure what to do with them. I knew I wanted to make it one piece, but never really had a vision for it until today. And so I'm going to take the three of these along with another sign that I had thrifted and create another wall piece. So I'm gonna start with the sign and I'm just going to be painting this entire thing with some white chalk paint, including the frame. And that way I have everything kind of on one surface and I can move it from there. After I finish painting that white, I'm going to set it aside to dry and I'm going to focus in on the little ceramic plaques. 
I'm going to clean them up, remove the stickers, and also remove the hangers from the back because I am going to adhere these to that sign and I want to make sure that they sit flat. So after I've done that, I'm going to use some more of that white wax that I created and white wax the entire pieces, um, including the edges. I'm going to paint that on and then I'm just going to take a paper towel and dab that off or wipe it off on the areas that I want to show more because I still want some of the floral like colors to come through but I don't want that um, yellowish background to really stand out. So I'm just going to dab that off, set those aside and let them dry while I finish the backing. For the back of the sign, I'm wanting to just touch up the frame a little. So I ended up doing a sage and a hazelnut like dry brush on the frame. Um, at first I just did the sage, but then once I put the pieces in the sign, I could see that yellowish tone and I just really wanted to bring it all together. So I went back with the hazelnut and I um, dry brushed it on. I did then seal the entire piece with polycrylic. That way it was nice and sealed and then we could adhere the ceramic pieces. Of course, I'm going to do this with my new love star bond and I'm going to just measure it out and try to get them um, spaced evenly and make little marks for myself so that I know where they need to be placed. So I went ahead and did that. I just um, did the glue onto the back of the piece so that it was on there and then I sprayed where it would, would go and adhered it and it adheres so quick. Um, it all went really well except for the last one. It kind of slightly got um, off center or a little crooked and I didn't have time to fix it because it it was down <laughs> but I really am liking this piece but something was just missing and so what I decided to do was take some of the white and some of the sage and a um, like a chip brush a small one and I did a stippling effect all over the background just to bring those tones in to give it a little texture and change it up a bit and this is becoming one of my favorite pieces. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Um, I didn't quite have a vision for what I wanted it to be, but I think sometimes you just have to let the piece speak to you. I would love to know what you guys have to say about these flips. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite was, what would you have done different. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this content. I hope to see you again in the next video. Um, again, I'm trying to hit 5,000 subscribers by the end of March, so if you could please be a part of that, I would truly appreciate it. I'm going to take you in for a closer look, and I'll see you next time.